Hey guys, today I've got a quick video about the PTR release notes that were just released for New World. Now there's tons and tons of stuff in here, right? We're talking about the summer event, the new 3v3 map, tons of just small tweaks when it comes to new quests and pre-existing quests, changes to the different areas and expedition changes. There's a lot in here, right? Don't worry though, I'll drop the link in the chat so you guys can all take a closer look because in today's video, we're just focusing on some of these combat changes. So let's just go ahead and dive into some of the big ones that we have. And right off the bat, we can see that the player base HP across all levels will increase by 10%. And that's simply because it's compensating for the removal of that Hale and Hardy Town buff. Many of us probably already have this buff in one of our you know towns but hey if not this is good news for you you don't have to worry about getting this buff up before wars and all that jazz it's just a clear-cut increase across the board next up there's a increased value of the non-combat 300 in attribute bonus from 10 percent to 25 percent so that's a nice little boost there they're over doubling that um, some of these other changes here, they look like they're just trying to speed up everything, right? Reducing overall in combat timers and things along those lines. And then this one's pretty interesting too. Made it so the player is no longer slowed if they become exhausted by being block broken. This, this season, it seems like they're really trying to get blocking back in the game. They're making some small tweaks here and there. So I'm excited to see the overall impact that has in some of these PvP situations. Because I know previously I didn't block much because I know I would just be exhausted if they kill my stam, right? But I guess that's not the case anymore. New blocking functionality. There we go. More blocking stuff, right? Added new blocking functionality that allows non-shield weapons to mitigate a portion of ranged attacks damage while blocking. That's great. I mean, good news for me because I'm a melee. Maybe not good news for you far range players who use, you know, bows or fire staffs, but... Either way, I think this is a good change. One-handed weapons. When blocking ranged attacks, 50% of the ranged attack damage will penetrate the block. Stamina damage will be reduced when this occurs. Okay. Um, so that's for one-handed weapons. Half the damage is reduced. Two-handed weapons, it seems like 30% of the attack damage will penetrate the block. Okay, makes sense. So we're, you know, we're, we're reducing the damage by 70% with two-handed weapons. That's, that's good news. Magic weapons, when blocking it with like a fire staff or something, 40% of the ranged attack damage will penetrate the block. And then shields remains unchanged. Cool, cool. Let's get through these really quick. Uh, Blunderbust fixed a few issues with some of these abilities. I'm looking for any changes though. Here we go. Blast shot increase range by one meter. Okay, that's good news for you got uh, blunder bus users out there. Um, bow looks like it's just small fixes. I'm looking for the new stuff. Rain of arrows increased bleed damage from the barbed arrows for upgrade from 7.1 to 15 percent. That's over doubling. Um, also reducing the cooldown from 25 seconds to 20 seconds. Reduce the time it takes from the arrows to be shot into the air to when the attack lands and increasing the radius. They're really buffing up that Reign of Arrows skill. We'll see if that is kind of being utilized now, especially with like a bleeding perk or something along those lines um, on your ring. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, they're renaming some things, rendering headshot. Okay, so they're changing it from a slow on the leg shot to a 10% rend for three seconds on a headshot. That's interesting. <clears throat> Next up, fire staff. Here we go. Fixing some issues here and there. Incinerate, increasing the damage a little bit and reducing the recovery of the attack. Here we go. We all knew that was coming. They are reducing the damage from Pillar of Fire. Doesn't seem like by that much though, so we'll kind of see how that goes. The cooldown, I feel like, is still crazy if it's a weapon perk, but hey, you live and you learn. We'll see what happens there. Execute for Great X. Adjust the timing to make the hitbox appear two frames later and last two additional frames. And reducing the cooldown. Still, I don't think it's usable. I can't wait for the day where people start using Execute left and right. It looks pretty cool, but it's just so slow and clunky. So we'll see what happens there. 
Whirlwind moved up block and dodge cancel windows to be the, uh, to be after the first spin instead of the second spin. Okay. Increase movement speed while active by 15%. Increase rotation speed of Whirlwind by 20%. They already buffed Whirlwind a little bit. Um, I, I'm seeing more and more people use this, especially if they're rocking a heavy set in wars and things along those lines. I like Whirlwind. I think it's just going to continuously being, you know, get buffed a little bit more and more over time. But hey, we'll see what happens there and if it gets to a point where they might have to back off a little bit. <clears throat> Lastly, for the Great Axe, they're just increasing the first damage for Reap a little bit, 60% to 80%. Great Sword increased the power of the Fortify from 10% to, I mean, from 8% to 10% per stack and increasing the duration a little bit. Cool. Okay. <coughs> and then um, Skyward Slash, reducing the radius of the ground impact from 3 meters to 2 meters and adjusted the circular shock wave to align with the hitbox size better. Okay. We'll have to see how that visually looks on the PTR. Um, let's see. Hatchet, they're doing some buffing for infected throw, rending throw, increased rend power from 10% to 20%. That's a big change too. <clears throat> Raging Torrent allowed the ability to block cancel at the same time you can dodge cancel. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, and social distancing, remove distance condition on the route for the stay back upgrade. Cool, cool, okay. Some more Ice Gauntlet changes. Um, ooh, this is huge right here. Ice Pylon. Ice Pylon will now be des destroyed if the Ice Gauntlet is unequipped. This is bad news if you rock Ice Gauntlet, but good news for everyone else because we know how annoying this is, especially in arenas, but we'll see how this impacts everything. <clears throat> Windchill moved Grit from the perk to being on the base ability. Okay, and then increased wind chills damage from 20% to 24%. So they're buffing wind chill a little bit. Life staff, I have heard a lot about this stuff right here. Reducing the radius from 100 meters to 25 meters. That's a fourth of what it was for Splash of Light. That's very low. They're trying to throw you a bone and say, hey, we'll increase the healing a little bit. But this range is going to be potentially a deal breaker for you healers out but hey let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree musket let's see um okay so they don't require a reload looks like they they buffed it a little bit for a power shot and powered uh powder burns so we'll see maybe they're they felt bad for nerfing the musket too but too much last time so they're giving you musket users something even if it's a little small um, Coral Lash is being updated. I remember getting this when the, first, the game first came out, right at 600, and my my aptitude score is not even close to that. Um, let's see. Only newer dropped versions are different. Okay. <clears throat> Here's some other changes for Sword and Board. Sped up the attack of Whirling Blade, increasing the damage a bit in the hitbox. Trying to see if there's anything major here. Okay. Let's keep going. Cyclone increasing the damage from 130 to 165. That's a decent bump right there. And they sped it up. I know a lot of people don't use Cyclone, so it'll be interesting to see if people start utilizing that more in the future. Void Gauntlet. Okay. Um, I heard about a big one here. Void Blade attacks can now have Grit with the 300 kind of tribute bonus. Okay, that's just a quick change. Added functionality to keep Tether active while swapping to secondary. I believe this is to secondary weapons. So that's huge, you know. This Tether is active when you swap off of the Void Gauntlet. So this is probably going to impact a lot of builds. I'm excited to see how creative people get with this one. And I guess we'll all see down the road. I'm sure we'll see some some new build videos pop up here and there as well to, that kind of take advantage of this update here. Warhammer. Um, what I found most interesting here is the fact that they're really buffing Armor Breaker, increasing the damage, 
increasing the power of their rend from the upgrade from 20% to 30%. 30% rend is pretty big. Um, also updating the opening act upgrade to be against targets above 70% health. So this is a big buff for armor breaker. I think people might slowly transition from wrecking ball to armor breaker, but hey, time will tell. Also small changes on mighty gavel, increasing the impact area. Nothing too crazy there. Rapier, uh, flurry, updated flurry's damage to evenly distribute, adjusted the damage, escalating range of 47 to 87 for each hit to a consistent 60% damage per stab. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Updated the thwarting strikes perk to be able to roll on void gauntlets. We'll see how people utilize that moving forward too. Um, cool. Okay, well, let me know in the chat what you guys think about all of these different changes. Oh, real quick, this is the last one too, which I know people are having conversations about. The fact that they fixed an issue that caused the invigorated punishment perk to apply on basic attacks and not just abilities. So this is kind of a big change too for the those of you that, you know, spam left click a lot, but really, you know, it, it does impact everyone that uses invigorated punishment, which is probably only, you know, almost everyone in the game at this point um, when it comes to PVP. So we'll see how this impacts everything. I still feel like it's better than mortal empowerment for most builds because, hey, you're still getting that damage boost to abilities and it's a pretty decent chunk, but hey, I guess everyone has their own thought on that. But regardless, let me know what you guys think about these changes. Were they good? Were they bad? Did they miss anything? Um, I'm excited to see how this rolls out in the PTR. Again, these are changes that are coming to the PTR. They're testing it out. We're not sure if this is hitting live yet, but we will find out soon. Thanks again, and I'll catch you guys later.